Second, we're, we're still in First Timothy. We're still in First Timothy. First Timothy chapter six. Last week we went over verses one through ten, and I still have verse six sticking in my in my spirit as I go through the week. But godliness with contentment is great gain. <laughs> Devotion to the Lord. Piety. Piety. You know, there's another word, way to say that. But contentment, godliness with contentment is great gain. You can't do a whole lot better for yourself. <laughs> as long as you are purposing in your heart to be godly and you have contentment. Whew, man, you got you got some you got something going on right there. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk, walk through verses 11 through 21. And as I read through those this week, as I meditated on them, God just spoke, he, it, he spoke afresh. Because I, I, you know, I <coughs> have read through them before. And got me understanding God, that God had for me for that time, for that moment. But even as I, I, I went through this week, it was like different things stuck. Different things stuck. So through verse 11 through 21, I'll read those. I'll, I'll, I'll read through those. And then we'll, we'll, but then we'll go over them. Amen. <laughs> but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness Godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good profession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his name he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only have immortality dwelling in the light, which <clears throat> no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. <laughs> Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in having, in, excuse me, but in the living God who giveth, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed, un committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning faith, concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. 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 So Paul, uh, going on in his encouragement to Timothy, going on in his instruction to Timothy regarding being a leader, regarding being a pastor, regarding being the overseer of other leaders in, in, in this church in Ephesus is, is, is just... His, his words to Timothy in this letter are replete. They're just, it sticks out with commands. It sticks out with encouragement. It sticks out with his, his inculcation, his imploring Timothy to stick to the word, to, 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 to remain faithful. Amen. He, he starts out, but thou, O man of God, verse 11, flee from these things and follow after righteousness, good, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. 
Flee from these things. Flee from, he, he, remember he's just talked about the, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Flee from the love of money. Mm -hmm. Flee from those things that are going to distract you. Flee from those things that are going to take you away from, from God. Flee from those things that want to set themselves up in your life. And take God's place. Flee from those things. Mm -hmm. Flee. <laughs> and, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. And that really stuck out to me simply because these attributes, these characteristics. He says righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. When he, when, he, when, he's, when he runs through that, he, it, re, it reminds me of when he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians. And we know the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, all of those things. He just... I, not mixing, intertwining, but he's not handpicking any of those things. But he's 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 stating characteristics that are gonna that are gonna help him to to maintain his position, to maintain his not his position of pastor, not his position of bishop, not his position of overseer, but his position of righteousness. But his position of of being a man of God. He's telling flee these other things, but pursue, but follow. After righteousness, the, some some are actually a one-to-one -one cross reference: love, faith, meekness, uh, patience could be transferred over to long suffering. Long suffering. But but still, all of these characteristics, all of these attributes. If he's not focused on God, if he's not trying to live by the Holy Spirit, none of these things are going to happen. No. Nothing. That none of these things are going to be manifested in his life. And he's going to be of one of those that he that he warned against in verse 21. Err, he's going to err concerning the faith. He's going to err. But Paul is encouraging him. Paul is lock, locking it in, if you will, for him to say, to say these things. Remain, remain as the man of God. Flee from these things. Flee from the love of money. Flee from, flee from all these distractions. Flee from whatever it is. And this, this, this is, he's, he's saying flee these attributes. Flee these characteristics. Flee these distractions. Whereas we're in, in, in prior text. where you had him talking about perverse disputings of men, corrupt minds, destitute of these, these, these teachers who were bringing forth a truth other than the gospel, a truth other than what was in the matter of the proud. Verse 4, going back to verse 4 of chapter 6. Uh, actually, let's go back to, to verse 3. It says, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, here we go, godliness again. He says, this man is proud, self-centered, he knows nothing, and he, he dotes, he, he pursues after questions, and he pursues after stripes, Stripes of words, you know, arguing over words and, 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 and majoring on minor stuff. He's full of envy. He's full of strife. He's full of railings. He's full of evil uh, surmising. Perverse disputings of men. Of per perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. He didn't say flee. He didn't say remove yourself, get thee out of that presence. He simply remove yourself, withdraw yourself, step back, take that step back to, to 
to not be influenced, to not become like that person. But from these characteristics, from these other things that will, because this, this vain teacher, this, this teacher can't set himself up in your life as God. He can't do that. He might try, but it, it, he's going to pr present a, a false, erroneous teaching that's going to sow seeds of discord, that are going to sow seeds of, of, of confusion, but this person can't set themselves up in Timothy's life. As God, as the, the, the things that are distraction, the love of money mm -hmm. starts on the inside and can manifest itself in an outward way and distract Timothy. While some have coveted after and they have erred from the faith, they've allowed themselves to err from the faith in that. But he's telling Timothy, from, the, from, from these things, yeah, flee from these things. Flee from these things and pursue and hold on to, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. <laughs> maintain that, but not only to maintain that, but it and, and, and it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be without conflict. It's not going to be without contest. It's not going to be without adversity. It's not going to be without opposition because in verse 12, he says, Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life, where, where, where unto thou art also called, and have professed a good profession of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Not fight the good fight of self-preservation. Not fight the good fight of distraction. Not fight the good fight of... Not fight the good fight of stripes of words. <laughs> not fight the good fight of envy. Not fight the good fight of strife. Not fight the good fight of railings. Not fight the good fight of evil surmisings. Not fight the good fight of perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Don't fight those fights. Fight the fight of good faith. Fight the fight. Yeah. <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight to hold on to your faith. Fight to strengthen your faith. Fight to have your faith increased. You fight to have your faith increased by walking in faith. By not fleeing, by, by, by not fleeing from hard situations. By trusting God. You fight the good fight of faith. You fight to have your faith strengthened. You fight to have your faith increased. Because the enemy doesn't want our faith increased. Mm -hmm. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. So why is the enemy going to do something that's going to require us to, to, to that's going to that's gonna allow us to have our strength? Faith strength. How, why, why, why would he do that? You see, God allows us to go into situations. So that he can strengthen our faith. Jesus was led into the desert by the Holy Spirit so that he could be tempted. Mm -hmm. So that his body could be brought under subjection through the fasting. And at the, and, 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 and at the end of the 40 days, the enemy thought he was coming at Jesus at his weakest point. But he didn't know he was coming at Jesus at his most focused point. He was coming at Jesus when Jesus was at his strongest. Yeah. He was at the, the quote-unquote end of the workout, but he wasn't tired. He wasn't exhausted. He was as strong as he could be because he came because his focus wasn't his body. His focus wasn't what he didn't have. His focus wasn't what he hadn't had for over those 40 days. His focus wasn't, okay, this is the end of the line, so now in a few minutes I can go eat. His focus wasn't, oh, I'm at the end of the line, so now I can go do this. This is almost over. So now his focus was the word. His focus was his purpose. His focus was who his father was. The last thing that God spoke to him the last thing that God spoke to him audibly before he went into that desert was, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. 
So do you think that he drew some strength and some confidence and some faith from those words as he went through that 40-day fast? Do you think that as he remembered and pondered those words, those words, that that was what strengthened and encouraged him to be able to answer the devil when the devil came, come, came at him with questions, when the devil came at him with strife of words, when the devil came at him with envy, with strife, with railing, with evil surmisings, with the first perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, when the devil came at him with all of those stuff, and all of that stuff, at the end of his time of his fast, do you think that Jesus' meditation on what God had said had some kind of bearing on what came out of him? Do you think that because his foundation was on what God had said, because he was busy standing on what God had said and not standing on what he didn't have, what he, what he was looking forward to, what anything that was material, anything that could be taken away from a fleshly perspective, that he was able to answer in his written when the enemy came in to attack the very thing that God had just affirmed his identity. If thou be the son of God, God had just said. He had just said. But you see, we fall to that. We fall to that. We fall to that on a, more often than, 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 than we're willing to admit. Because God will speak something. And the enemy will do something in the immediate time after that to attack that, to make us question that. But rather than stand on, rather than lay hold to, rather than lay hold on eternal life, lay hold on what God has spoken, lay hold on what we know from God to have spoken, we let go of that and entertain the question. And entertain that which the enemy just did to try to make us, to try to distract us, to try to get us to take our eyes off of God, to get us to take our eyes off of what he's just done, what he's just said. That's why the enemy's going to come at us with teaching other than, with content other than what the gospel is. Because he wants us. Where, where, where Paul encourages Timothy not just to fight the good fight of faith, but lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. Think of the, what, what he's saying, lay hold on. In, 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 the, in the game of football, <laughs> when that runner's going down the, down the sideline, or he's coming at you, if you just try to push him, and that's a strong runner, you're going to get run over <laughs> If you just step to the side and try to trip him, he's a strong runner. He's going to run right through your foot. If you just lay down thinking he's going to trip over your butt, you might get kicked on his way to the... But in order to get him down, you got to lay hold on him. you got to wrap him up. you got to hold, grab tight and not let him go to bring him down. We have to lay hold on eternal life. We have to tackle eternal life. We have to embrace eternal life. We have to hit it and wrap it up and not let it go. Lay hold on eternal life. Because that's the promise of God. That's what God has given us. But the enemy is going to come and he's going to try to distract us with strifes of words contentions about what this means and what and what that means. He's going to come at us with envy. He's going to come at us with strife. He's going to come at us with railings. He's going to come at us with evil surmisings. The perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. There are many people out there who just simply, their whole purpose in life, they, they purpose that all they're going to do is question the gospel. Not receive it, but whatever they can do to get somebody else to not receive it. Whatever they can do to get somebody to question it. Whatever they can do to make a believer waver in his faith. Mm -hmm. 
That's what they're going to do. They come up with all these questions. Yeah. There's a, a Christian apologist. His name is Robbie, Robbie, Dr. Robbie Zacharias. And he said a, uh, there was a, a gentleman that approached him trying to with, with, with a, because the, the, the contention that there's nothing God can't do. There's nothing God can't do. So this guy spent all these hours coming up with a question to try to stump Robbie Zacharias. But uh, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Robbie, the guy, and he, he comes up to, and he presents the question. He says, if, if there's nothing God can't do, then uh, let me ask you this. Is it possible for God to create a rock that's so heavy that he can't move it? And he, he presented that and he smiled and he, and he, and, and he expected Pastor, Pastor Ronnie Zacharias to, to put all this thought into, into the question and try to answer it and, and argue it and debate about it. And basically, Pastor Robbie said, you know what? <laughs> That's a dumb question. It's a dumb question because there's no need for that in my life. There's no need for that in the life of any believer. But I know that whatever situation I face, God is there, and he can get me through it. And I believe if, if he would have had the opportunity, he would have sang that song, Whatever You Need is in the room. <laughs> Healing is here. Deliverance is here. Breakthrough is here. All these things are here because God is in the room. And that's basically what he's saying. Whether this rock and can lift, blah, 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 not, not even important. Doesn't even deserve the, 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 the honor of a response. But he stayed focused on what his purpose was, and his purpose was to present the gospel, present God as who he is. Heavenly Father, yes, he can do anything. He didn't get caught up in the perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind. Because he could have stood there all day and argued that question. And every second, every syllable, every breath of that argument is pushing that man further away from God and not drawing him near. But because Pastor Zacharias pushed that aside because he remained focused on why he was there, on the calling that was on his life, on the commitment that he made to God, he was able to just push that question aside, all that distraction, all those vain disputings, and present God again. Let's get back to the subject at hand. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy. Avoid these things. Avoid a man who is proud. He's knowing nothing. Strife's the words. For which come an enemy strife. Right? All of those. Avoid those things. Flee from those things. He goes on again. And then in verse 13. I give thee charge in sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of the Lord of, of our Lord, Jesus Christ, which in time he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And I, I, it's interesting that he says, I give thee charge in sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Jesus, who before Pilate witnessed a good confession. There are times when we're going through our, there are times, when we're going through our hardest and most difficult time. Suffice it to say that in his time here on earth, the crucifixion experience was a harrowing experience for Christ. But remembering why he was here, remembering who he was, remembering whose he was, remembering for what purpose he came, he endured all of that. He didn't just endure all of that, but he endured all of that in a manner that still gave God glory. He, gave, he endured all of that in a manner that gave no man excuse. He endured all of that to 
the slaughter. Without argument, without contention, without losing who he was. In the, in the face of lies, in the face of being disrespected, in the face of being made fun of, in the face of being mocked, in the face of all that hurt, physical, emotional, and otherwise, in the midst of all of that, he was still Christ. He was still Christ. We have to remember that in our worst time. We have to remember that in our most hurtful situations. We have to remember that. It's not saying that we nothing is being diminished, nothing is being overlooked. We're not suppressing feelings. We're not doing any of that. But we're simply remembering whose we are. We're simply remembering why we're here. We're simply remembering that, yes, we've said that, yes, Lord, I will serve you. Yes, Lord, I will show your love. That was a little tangent, so, but but getting back into the into the into the scripture, going on in verse sixteen, he says, "Who hath only, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to him be honor and power everlasting." talking about Christ and who he is and just what he deserves. Verse 17 says, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God which give us, giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Those who are rich, there's going to be those who are affluent, those who have a lot of money, those who are wealthy in the midst. He says, charge them that are rich in this world in this world. To not be high-minded, to not think yourself above everybody else because you have more money than they. Because God doesn't see it that way. God doesn't see it that way. He is, good, he is a respecter of no man in that regard, in, by, by, by any regard whatsoever. God doesn't see it that way. Don't be high-minded. Don't think yourself above anyone else because you might have more money and they have less. Because if we think back to the, 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 the account of the rich man and Lazarus, who ended up where? It's not because God regarded bank accounts, because God regarded soul accounts. Whose soul had the greatest deposit? Amen. Amen. Lazarus had the deposit of, of, of the gospel. He had, he had his soul in position where he could, when, to when he left this earth, bang. So, God is not a respecter of that. But he said, encourage them, remind them to not trust in uncertain riches. You can have all the money and, and, and be miserable. Be miserable. Absolutely miserable. Stressed out to the end of time because you don't know what because your great concern is anybody that comes up to you, what do they want? What do they want? What are, how are they going to try to take my money? Da, da, da. All, all these other things and distractions based on your money. Your money. Your money. God don't care. He don't care. Not a bit. <laughs> he says, but trust in the living God who richly who gives us richly all things to enjoy. It, it, the, the rich, okay, if you're rich, that's fine. There's no, no sin in being rich either. But with your riches, that they do good. Do good things with your money. Do. Exactly. He says that they be rich in good works. Be affluent. Be overflowing in good works. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Ready to distribute. And that, that word distribute 
comes from the Greek word eumetadotos, E-U-M-E-T-A-D-O-T-O-S. And it means good at imparting. So if you're going to be rich, be ready to distribute. Be, be good at giving stuff away. Give it to somebody else. Amen. Be good at Be ready to do that. Be that. Then the word um, communicate. Be ready to distribute. Ready to be good at giving out and be willing to communicate. The word communicate comes from the from the from the Greek word koinonikos, K-O-I N-O-N-I-K-O-S. And it means to liberally or generously give. It it actually uses the word peculiarly, P-E-C-U-N-I-A-R-I-L-Y, peculiarly. And that's just a fancy word to say, having to do with money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Money Be willing to be liberal in giving away your money. Mm -hmm. God says, he loves a cheerful giver. Be generous. He, He was generous when he gave. We know this because he gave the best. He bankrupted heaven of the presence of Christ himself so that we could spend eternity with him. So be willing to, be willing to be generous. Be willing to. And from koinonikos, that is actually from the root word koinonos, K-O-I-N-O-N-O-S. And it is a a sharer, an associate, or a companion, a partaker, or a partner. So be willing to be a sharer if you're going to be rich. If you're rich, be willing to be a sharer. Don't build up your storehouses for your future. Don't build up your storehouses just for you. Mm -hmm. If it's got to be held in the storehouse, still share. Be willing to be generous. Be willing to be a sharer. Be ready to do those things. In verse 19, he says, laying up in store for them a good foundation against time, that they may come to lay hold on eternal life. There it is again. Lay hold on eternal life. Don't hold on to those riches so tightly that you disqualify yourself or make yourself unable to lay hold on eternal life. In verse 20, I I, I, I really like verse 20. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and the oppositions of science, falsely so-called. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. What has been committed to Timothy's trust? First and foremost, the Word of God. The Word of God. The true, unadulterated, Word of God. As believers, God has entrusted us with his most valuable thing. And that's the word of God. That's his word. Because the gospel is the power of God. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Unto salvation. Mm -hmm. The power of God unto salvation. He's trusted us with that. We get nervous. We get discouraged. Because we wonder if God thinks he can trust us with money. Mm -hmm. If we think he can trust us with people. If we think he can trust us with material things. 
If he can trust us with his word, if he can trust us with his power, his power, it is the power of God unto salvation. If he can trust us with that, then surely he can trust us with the rest of those things. Mm -hmm. Because that's the most important thing that he has imparted, that he has entrusted us with. And how we faithfully handle and manage that in our lives. That's how. And that's the whole thing Paul is telling Timothy here. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings. Profane is just evil. Evil. Just evil. Avoid evil and vain babblings. Yes. Vain babblings. That's just senseless conversation. Yes. Useless arguments. Uh -huh. Foolish arguments. Yes. <laughs> Did Adam and Eve have belly buttons? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. God could, don't spend hours arguing, debating on somebody with somebody over those kind of things. No. No. Because that's not Adam and Eve having belly buttons, that's not getting anybody into heaven. Amen. <laughs> this is this is what he's saying. Don't get caught up. No. In those vain babblings. Mm -hmm. And this is what and the oppositions of science, which is falsely so called. The oppositions of science. Science, the word science. Is equated to the word knowledge. Knowledge. And that is presented here. And the word knowledge, it goes back to or excuse me, the word science, here as it is used, <clears throat> comes from the Greek word gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S, -S, which was where we get the root word for the, the agnostics and the Gnostics and all of that. And it means knowing or knowledge. And it comes from the root word of genosiko, G-I-N-O-S-K-O, which means to know, to allow, to be aware of, to feel, to perceive, to speak, to be sure, or to understand. So there's a there's a knowledge. There's a he's talking about knowledge. But Paul is the one that encourages us to that what we know is important. It's the truth we know that makes us free. But he's not contradicting the knowing of the truth, he's not talking about the knowing of the truth telling um, Timothy to avoid. He's saying the oppositions of science, the opposition of knowledge, the opposition of knowing the truth, which is falsely so-called. Avoid, avoid those things. Avoid foolish arguments. Avoid evil uh, speech and conversation. Avoid anything that sets itself up against. Anything that opposes knowledge of the truth. Avoid those things. It's just the, the wording of it in the, in here in the King James. Where he's just like, oh, Timothy. Oh, Timothy. There's, there's an endearing there. Oh, Timothy. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. And it's, 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 it's just a building on and an affirmation of what he's already told him in these, just even in this little section here. But thou, O man of God, another endearing, oh, in verse 11, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Remember who you are. Remember the teaching. Remember the truth. Stay steadfast. Stay steadfast. Stand. Stand on the truth. Lay hold on eternal life. 
Don't be distracted by the love of money. Don't be distracted by the perverse disputings of corrupt, of men of corrupt minds. Don't be distracted by any of that. Don't, don't let any of that get you down. Don't let any of that. But if you, but, 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 but follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Hold, keep that which is committed to thy trust. And I can when I, I, I read that and I, and I put my name in there. I put my name in there. Oh, oh, Randy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. And I think that what 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 God has deposited in me is Holy Spirit. Yes. All the all the word that He's that He's, that he's, that he's deposited inside of me. Keep that. Keep that. Keep maintain that. Hold on to that. Let, and all of that, do with it what God would do with it. You see, it, 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 it takes me back to the parable of the talents. When the, the master called his servants in and gave one five and gave one two and gave one one. And the, the two that took it and did with it and, and, and handled it the way the master would handle it. And they, and, and they gave the master back more than what he gave. And he said, well done, my good and faithful. And he, and he said, well, I, I'm, I'm playing. Here, give, you give me that. I'll give you more. Mm -hmm. I'll give you more. But the one who hid it, the one who was afraid, the master, it wasn't that he did any, it wasn't that he didn't do anything with it. But he was given to it, and he was afraid. He let fear decide what he did and didn't do with what the master gave him. All right. The fear caused him to do that. The others operated in faith. The others did what, did what the master would do with it. Without regard of the consequence. But they did what he would do with it. But they saw that, okay, he, he does this with it. And it produces something. So he that give it to me, he has given it unto me. So I'm going to do what he would do with it. Mm -hmm. And it produced something. Fear caused this one to do nothing. And he had only that to present to the master. Mm -hmm. And he, in fact, he, he, he buried it in the dirt. And he gave it back dirty. So when I when I when I read that first, uh, you know, I'm encouraged in myself to follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Yeah. I'm encouraged in myself to follow after that, but to keep that which is committed to my trust. That gospel. He's trusted me to be a indwelling. For his very spirit. Keep that. Maintain that. Take that which God has given us and use it in the manner what he intended right. Right. to be used. In verse 21, he just he closes it out. He's saying, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Because they didn't, number one, lay hold on the gospel. They didn't follow after the very things that God calls us and commands us to be as believers. They didn't hold on to. They didn't follow after. They didn't pursue. Remember verse 10 in, in, in um, above. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The pursuit of money. Even, uh, I had it marked. Verse 9, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. They that will be rich, those that hope to, those that aspire to be rich. 
for all the wrong reasons. They that will, they fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in the destruction. They, they pursue, they're pursuing after it for the wrong reason. They're pursuing after it to be the center of their life. They're pursuing after it to be the foundation of the house that they're building on. They're pursuing after it to be their God. And it is incapable of being their God. They're pursuing that to be their foundation. But anything that is created, anything that is under God, that you want to be your foundation, you build your house on it, and it can be the best built house in the world. But when the storm comes, and the storm is coming, the storm is coming, if it's not built on the rock, if it's not built on that solid foundation, the house is coming down with a great crash. Yes. Because your focus, the love of money. That it, it was, it was, it, you didn't have, we didn't have Christ. We didn't, we didn't build on the rock, the foundation. We didn't lay hold on to eternal life. Anywhere and everywhere where it talks about those things. Verse 10, they have erred from the faith. Verse 21, they have erred concerning the faith. You messed up. Anytime you let something come in, move God aside, mm -hmm. you err. You've erred mm -hmm. from the faith. Mm -hmm. You messed up. Messed up, wrong. Bro. <laughs> Really, that's really accurate. You've messed up broadly. You messed up wide. You messed up bad. Bad. You got to go to the party trail. Because, because we didn't follow after the things of God. We didn't follow after the characteristics. We didn't follow after that which would draw us nigh unto the Lord, which would be pleasing unto the Lord. But we allowed something else. Because we didn't keep that which was committed to our trust. <laughs> that is the greatest, the greatest thing that God can give us is trust. He trusts us. He trusts us to help one another. He trusts us to love one another. He trusts us to worship Him. He trusts us to share His word. He trusts us. He trusts us implicitly. And here's the beauty of it. We didn't do anything to earn that trust. No. Mm -mm. Not a thing. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't stand myself before the Lord and have the audacity to tell God, yes, I've done this and I believe you should trust me because. Mm -hmm. Because if he looked at me in that vein, oh no, he would strip everything off. But I'll be so far in the negative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! In fact, I was so far in the negative. <laughs> but Jesus came. <laughs> and that blood, yeah. where I was, that were in the, in, 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 on, on a balance sheet, when you're in the negative, you're in the red. Mm -hmm. That's a bad red. That's a bad red. See, when God came along and I was covered in the blood and I was in the red, mm -hmm. I was in the right red then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because God trusted us. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do anything to earn that trust. That's right. We didn't do anything to earn that trust. Mm -hmm. So I'm careful when I tell another human being, you haven't earned my trust. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. But I'm careful when I tell another you. human being, you haven't earned my trust. Because uh, trust is a seed that you sow. So, yes, is. Trust is a seed that you put out there. Yes. And guess what? If you trust somebody and they abuse that trust and they get hurt and, and you get hurt because of that, guess what? God you got a comforter on the inside. God you got a comforter on the inside that's going to be greater than the worst hurt that you can experience because you trusted, because you acted like God. 
You think God in his trust of us hasn't been hurt because of the way we behaved ourselves on occasion? Yes. But he's willing to endure that because he knows where he's taking us. He endures that because he loves us. Love trusts. Love trusts. God trusts. And even though we hurt him on occasion, yes. he loves us anyway. But he's still on pressure. He loves us anyway. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't withdraw. Mm -mm. He doesn't put us on probation. Mm -mm. None of that. <laughs> Give us a list of things to do to, to demonstrate our... No. No. He forgives. So don't fear, because fear is what stops us from trusting. Fear, fear stops us from doing. Fear stops us from handling that which was entrusted to us. Fear stops us from handling what was entrusted to us and doing with it what God would do with it. Amen. That's the word for the day. Amen.